welcome to MW Outdoors in this video segment on how to build a watering hole for deer hunting. Now a few things to keep in mind while building your own watering hole is number one, the location of it, and how much water do you have throughout your property. That's going to determine the effectiveness of your watering hole. Second is the size of the watering hole in terms of area versus depth. And third is making that water hole look as natural as possible so you don't spook the deer. The first one I want to talk about real quick is the location itself. We picked this location first because it was really nice. There was already a natural opening here, so we didn't have to do a lot of tree cutting. In fact, we didn't cut any trees down. Um, all we did, if you see a little brush behind us, we removed brush back behind, did a little cutting there to open it up uh, and to make it as secure and look as safe as possible for the deer so we're not spooking them. The last thing you want to do is get them bunked up in a corner, almost like you're, you're trapping an animal or something. That's the last thing you want to do. You want to feel them or make them feel safe. The second is location determinant and the determination of bedding to food plots um, to your hunting grounds throughout the property. Now this location is great because to the left of me, 100 to 200 yards, we have a bunch of hinge cutted trees. A lot of bedding areas over there. And then in front of me here about 100 yards, we have a food plot, we have beans, and behind that is a big cornfield. Now to the right of me, a couple hundred yards across the ravine, is another food plot, nice field. And then on top of that, another couple hundred yards, about 400 from here, we have another big pond. So this location is perfect. A lot of deer funnel right through here. Behind me, they come around this ridge and they start heading out to the fields and over to the ravine. So it's a really nice area for these deer to funnel in. Another thing you wanna keep in mind is we already have the food plots. We already have that resource to grab the deer's attention. A lot of them are already out there. So you don't need to put a food or a, a watering hole in your food plot. You're basically wasting that. So we have it all off about 100, 150 yards off away from that. And we have a nice deer stand up to the right, looking right down. If you have a watering hole where your deer stand is not, you're basically taking them away from your hunting, especially when you're bow hunting. We highly recommend putting it close to a deer stand. Second is the size of the watering hole itself. So we recommend a 150 gallon bucket or water container, whatever you want to call it, um, tank. We have a 150 gallon tank here. It's a Rubbermaid tank. Uh, this tank was about $170 after tax. Now that's a small investment, a larger investment. If you don't want to spend that much, here's our dogs. If you don't want to spend that much, there are different quality tanks out there. A 110 gallon tank with a little less quality material, you'll be under 100 bucks. Uh, but if you could try to stay to that 100, 150 gallon, we find that works really well. Uh, five, six years ago, we started using 25, 35 gallon tanks, and they're only a couple feet tall. We found out that every other week we were coming back and the water was dried up through evaporation. Now the problem with that is, once you have a good watering hole, you're starting to get that pattern, you're starting to bring deer in. Once that's dried up, and you don't know if you come back two weeks later, you lost that deer's pattern, and it could be really hard to get that back. So this Rubbermaid 150 gallon tank, it's two and a half feet deep. It gives us a lot of water depth compared to the surface area. The larger the surface area and the smaller the depth, the easier it's gonna evaporate, the faster it's gonna evaporate. So that's why we chose this, um, this size tank in particular. Last thing I wanna get into is making the water hole look as natural as possible. Notice right now we have it in the ground. We still have some work to do to bring up the dirt and the soil around it um, to bring it up. You want to keep it below the surface here um, so it's, like I said, as natural as possible. You're not spooking the deer. You really want to try to do everything you can to make it like, you know what, this was supposed to be here. In fact, this has only been here for a couple days and we're just now getting back to it. And we have buck tracks, doe tracks, fawn tracks all around this already. And there was less than an inch because we just got a rain. So it's already working for us. Now we're going to stop this video. We're going to do some work. Uh, we're going to bring up the soil so it's all flat around. We do have a couple inches of soil in the water hole itself. This helps bring it into a muddy coloring and brings it for nutri nutrients. Deer seem to like that for whatever reason. Again, that's part of making it as natural as possible. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna continue to fill this and fill in the dirt around it. And we're gonna also um, cut a log, not too uh, thick, but a log that we could put in there. And that just helps any little small creatures, animals, if they fall in, they can climb out too. And we strongly believe it also adds another natural element to the pond itself. All right, so now we are, we've been working on making this pond natural. Again, we started filling everything in. So right here, all the dirt, it's filled in evenly with the small watering hole. We filled the rest of the water. You can see that it's muddy. Uh, that's because of the, some of that soil that we put on the ground. 
um, just to give that more natural look and that element to it. Here's the log that we have in. Again, it's just for any creatures or small animals that get in there. Um, and, you know, it could actually add some natural element to that as well. So what we're going to do is we're going to finish off here and just plant some uh, natural grass seed around um, the area here. And then, as you can tell, if we look up here to my back right, that's one of our deer stands. So again, your watering hole, we highly recommend keeping it close to a deer stand, especially if you're bow hunting. Um, or else you're really just wasting that resource. Um, so we're basically finished up here. If you have any questions, um, leave a comment down at the bottom of the video or head over to MW Outdoors, our website. We'll have an article there on it too. The last thing we're gonna finish up here is doing a mock scrape and we'll create another video on that. Thank you again for watching.